So I was on a family holiday to Wales. This was a couple of years ago, maybe. Um, and we just like got to a service station. And you know, if you've like been on a family car journey and you're all like fucking trapped in there. Mm. Uh, and so like, you know, you split out the car and you're like, right, need to get a coffee. So I went to go get a coffee. I came back and my grandma who was 78 at the time, uh, she, on crutches, she got a bit of a dicky leg, uh, had been, uh, racially abused by some lads in a car who started shouting jihad at her and Allahu Akbar and this, that and the other. Now my grandmother is a Muslim, but she doesn't wear hijab. She doesn't even wear a Hamza the way I do. There are no outward signs of her Muslimness at all. So you've got two options, which is either number one, these um, boorish, thuggish, racist guys in a car had particularly refined halal detectors or um, the language that they had to hand, which was one around signifiers of Islam, could be applied to anyone who was brown enough mm. and looked South Asian. So once upon a time, what they would have shouted was Paki, despite her not being Pakistani. Uh, what they might have shouted would be something like Wog, which was applied to both South Asians and black people. Whereas now the set of the signifier here you have is to do with Islam. So you can see that Islam Islamophobic language is being mobilized and deployed at simply anyone who isn't white. And this isn't just something that you see in terms of street racism. Jean-Charles de Menezes was not Muslim, but he was brown enough to die as one. And so I think that when we, th you know, when we think about how Islam works as a uh, floating signifier is that it is remarkably sophisticated as a technology of governance because it works in terms of um, security uh, apparatus and constructing uh, threats to um, you know the nation state existential threats to civilization but it also works absorbing the kind of uh, racialized hierarchies around phenotype that have existed What's a phenotype? So phenotype is like um, skin color mm. hair color eye color, hair texture, that kind of stuff. Absorbing- It's a genetically inherited trait, right? Yeah, genetically inherited tra trait. And so we talk about like racial phenotypes because, you know, um, race is a social construct. I'm not blowing anyone's mind with that, right? So, you know- Go check out Ash's old videos from our media. Yeah, no, this was, this was how I started out is by yeah. talking about mm. the history of racialization. Um, so Islamophobia is dynamic enough to absorb all those, all those things. Do you, if you remember when Lee Rigby was killed, and I think it was uh, Nick Robinson who said that the murderers were of Muslim appearance. Mm. Well, they were in Western dress. What was of Muslim appearance about them? And also they were they were sub-Saharan, like they, 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 they were Nigerian, right? Yeah, so, so it's like West Africa to, like the, to Mecca. You're talking mm. like, this is like six, seven, eight thousand miles, a long way, bro. What, so what he meant was not white. So yeah. of Muslim appearance just meant not white, yeah. placed in a context of an elevated security threat, which makes you think mm. Muslim. Mm. Um, so it obviously has a relationship to racialization. Also, and this is more of a historical tangent, um, if you want to go back to the scientific racist categories which were developed in the 19th century, um, there were social Darwinists who talked about a uh, homo Islamicus, Islamic man. Wow. So there was actually a scientific bracket for That's Muslims. so stupid. It's really dumb. Because I mean, Islam goes from like Borneo, Indonesia, all the way to West Africa. That's so stupid. Wow, it's stupid. half the planet. But so that's why I think that it is uh, racism. And you know, in the terms of like, you know, Muslims aren't a race, so Islamophobia can't be racist. Black people aren't a race either, right? That's also, true, um, right? you know, a product of uh, yeah. historical and social forces and they experience racism. I mean, I'll give you a concrete example of this. You, you gave one as well. Um, I was arrested in 2011 and when I was picked up, this is, you know, um, I won't send traffic to a right wing site that talks about it, but it's documented if you want to look, you know, my former, my mother's name is Aaron Peters. That was her name after she got married. It's not my name. It's not my father's name. It's not her maiden name. Um, and so when I was picked up by the police, finally, they got a spotter card. They recognized me at a squat eviction. God I remember knows, that day. God knows why I went to a squat eviction after doing something silly, after breaking into a bank in the wheelie bin on a protest. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Waving everyone in like Lady Bountiful. Um, so they got me and they were like, what's your name? Who are you? And I, eventually I gave them my name, which at the time was Aaron Peters, which was my mother's married name. Bastani is my father's name. And they just didn't believe me. 
They did not believe that my name was Aaron Peters. And the guy who picked me up, actually, the arresting officer was an Iranian, Iranian British guy. And then his colleague was a white British guy. And they just, they, they honestly didn't believe me for about several hours. And they thought that when they were going to go to my house, it was going to be full of fucking... This, by the way, this is a counter-terrorism unit, right? Doing Mickey Mouse protest stuff, as you've seen from Spy Cops time after time. Complete misallocation of resources. You know, I'm not... Michael and I differ a lot from the sort of disband the police people on the left in terms of short-term demands. Very short-term demand is getting rid of the TSG and really scaling down counter-terrorism around this stuff. But yeah, you know, they... They racialize. I would, I would, I would advance the vast majority of the people that they arrest as as Muslims. They're racializing them as Muslims because that's how they make sense of you know perceived threats. And that's the thing. Racialization is a social process. It's not a biological one. Mm. And I think that's the thing that people miss is that we've seen the racialization of Muslims um, transform since 2001. We're in a strange position where we're not looking at that as a historical artifact which exists, you know, decades and centuries in the past. Mm. This is something that we're living. Um, and I'm sorry, but Twitter, you're just going to have to get on board with that. 